before we misconstrue anything, you are coming out in support of these comments, right? Well, not in the entirety, but I came out in support of uh, Chairman Steele because I think it was overkill. He had a, made a casual comment. He wasn't setting policy, and all of a sudden people jump on him like we're not allowed to have a discussion. As a matter of fact, I did like what he said, so I enjoyed the fact that we're willing to have a discussion about the popularity of this war. And truly, it is Obama's war, even though it was started during the last administration. Obama said this is the good war, and he's expanding the war, and the American people aren't with him. The majority of the American people are tired of the war and and they'd like to see it and they'd like to see our troops come home i mean this, this idea that uh as soon as somebody has a discussion even if it's an off-handed discussion people are clamoring for him well, to resign Congressman, I, I don't think that's quite fair you, ha you have to let me get in on this because it seems like it, you know i understand what you're saying you want people to talk about the war but it seems like it, it, he wasn't factually correct very little of what he said, if anything, was correct factually uh, in those comments. So, and he came well, back himself. Know, well, hang on one second. He came back himself and clarified them. So, why are you supporting him for comments that he had to clarify? Well, he, and he, back, I didn't hear his wrong. clarification, but if he clarified his statement, because he, he wasn't making a policy statement. If he came back and said, "I'm not just stating policy," that is not exactly my position, as you interpret. But he wasn't telling the truth. Yeah. Pardon me. He wasn't telling the truth. Well, I think you're not telling the truth right now yourself. He said that this war. He said that he said that this war was started by, or basically saying the war was started by the Obama administration, and no one no, even wanted. No, he did not no say one that. wanted to go. In, let me finish. No one wanted to go into this war when, in fact, when we went into this war, most of the country supported it, and it was started again under President Bush. So most of what he said, if That's not right. all of it, right. was not but factually what he correct. Is saying, he, what he is saying politically, this is Obama's war. Even in the last campaign, matter of fact, I thought Obama was more hawkish on this war than McCain was because he was calling for increasing troops in Afghanistan before the Republicans were. So I, I think in many ways, at least politically, this is Obama's war and uh, it, it is a political issue. The Republicans really suffered from the fact that uh, the Iraq war uh, continued for so long and they hurt us at the polls. So I think that uh, Republicans ought to have a right to at least say that maybe this war isn't going well and not blindly support every single thing that is being done. And then all of a sudden, if an individual does, you know, people accuse you, oh, you're un-American, you're unpatriotic, and, and you know, they pile on and uh, then they pressure somebody like Steele, like Chairman Steele, that he has to back off. But he, he didn't have a policy statement. He was merely making a casual statement. And when he said that for over a thousand years and even longer, nobody's been successful uh, successful in invading Afghanistan he okay. is telling the yeah. truth well hang on that hang on not a lie. you have to let me get let, you have to let me get in there because I want to get, go through more subjects and so um, let me jump in every so often okay congressman you have publicly questioned Republicans who want Steele to resign over this in fact this is what you said and I have to ask you said I have to ask myself what is the agenda of the harsh critics demanding this resignation why do they support Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama's war what do you mean by that statement well, it is. They're the ones who's running foreign policy. Republicans don't have anything to do with foreign policy. They're the ones who demanded to increase the troops. They're the ones who are pursuing this, and it's not going very well. Matter of fact, it's going very poorly. We've been there nine years, and the evidence is not very good that we're going to have a military victory. Matter of fact, the military and the politicians don't even seek a goal of military victory. They're hoping they can get a political victory. So that isn't the goal. So what are we doing? I mean, wh what are, why are we there? Uh, the Al Qaeda is not there. Uh, there's a uh, there's probably a hundred or so by according to our CIA just reported last week, but they're probably in Pakistan. And if we go and chase them into Pakistan, they're going to go to Yemen. Let me ask you, how go to Somalia? So you, it's 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 a fruitless venture, and it deserves a discussion. And if the chairman of the party actually relates that he has a little bit of doubt about this, I think it's very healthy, and he shouldn't be called to resign. The, I mean, chair, th this, the chairman of the over, party you know, and you see at odds with what most people in the party, especially high-ranking Republicans, uh, feel about this war and about um, these comments. How, um, do you, how, what do you make of that? Do you, are you feeling the pressure from that? 
No, I think they may be feeling the pressure on the American people who agree with me. And, uh, of course, I'm a stickler for the Constitution and limited government and the way we go to war. And uh, uh, I, I think the American people, by large numbers, are now with me on this. So uh, uh, I, I just don't think that uh, people should be closed out in, in the debate. Hey, and listen, so, I want to ask uh, you this. I, but, I, but ask I think you it, this. it certainly wasn't necessary for for uh, Michael Steele to resign over All this. Right. He, he's clarified his statement, and that's fine. And well, Dan, we have to, we're going to have to go to a break statement. in a little bit here, Congressman. But I want to ask you, if you were not feeling, if conservatives weren't feeling um, so positive about what might happen in November, do you think, would even you be calling for Michael Steele to resign? Do you think the drumbeat would be even um, Louder I, I have no idea. Resign. I can't interpret it for them. But all I know is for them calling him, for him to resign means that they don't think about November. That was one of my points in my statement. Okay. Why do this now? Why call for a resignation when the Republicans are doing well and it looks like they're going to have victory? Why do they want to divide us now and say, oh, let's have a big fight over Michael Steele? That's not good for the party. We're gotcha. doing well. We're winning elections. The momentum is on our side. And there's nothing wrong with the debate on this issue because the American people will welcome it. People generally vote for the peace candidate. They voted for Obama because he came across more for peace in the last election. And, and George Bush in the year 2000, he was the peace candidate. He says, no nation building, no policing the world. And he won the election. So I would say it's a very popular position. It's a traditional Republican position. And to say that a person, just because he hints that he might be sympathetic to this, that he has to resign, that is not right. And this will continue, no doubt, until up in November. The Republicans will use one way to, you know, say it's okay. The Democrats will use it against them, so we shall see. But most of all, I want to thank you for coming on today and taking time out on the You're 4th welcome. of July. It's an important day, holiday for our country. Thank you.